Hello everyone, welcome. This is Jordan Berry, Instructional Designer at Hack, and this video is designed to give you an overview of how to create a student assignment submission folder using D2L's Dropbox tool. So the Dropbox submission tool is a great way to collect, organize, and review student submissions within D2L. This video is going to take a look at how to create and set up a Dropbox folder so that it will be reflected in the gradebook and it will be ready to start accepting student work. So let's get started. So the first thing you'll want to do is click on Dropbox in the nav bar. So you'll see this is our Dropbox area where all of the submission folders for the class will show up. Now we have none as of now, so we'll start by clicking New Folder here. So now we're taken to a new page, and what we'll notice is that we're on the Properties tab in the Dropbox tool. We'll start here, but we'll also take a look at the Restrictions tab later on as well. So first, we'll create a title for our Dropbox. Try to make sure to give it a name that helps students identify what the assignment is. So for example, let's name this one Essay Number 1, Narrative Analysis. Next in the area, you can type instructions or requirements for the assignment in this box here. If you already have them typed up in a Word document or in a PDF, you can simply upload that document as an attachment by clicking on this button here, Add Attachment, and then choose File to locate the file on your computer. D2L also has added this nifty little button here that allows you to record an audio explanation of the assignment if you'd like to do that as well. Now we'll scroll down and we'll see that we can choose the assignment type. We're going to leave this as an individual assignment, but just be aware that you can create group assignments in Dropbox, but that'll require you to create groups within D2L first. And that's a topic of another future training. So we want the students to upload their essays as a PDF file, so we'll leave this submission type option as file submission. It's important to note that, for consistency's sake, it's a good idea to explain to students exactly what file format you'd like them to upload. Each file type has its advantages and disadvantages, but ensuring that all the students upload the same file type, whether it's a doc or a PDF or an image file, it's important to helping you navigate grading these assignments, and it makes the job much more simpler. So next, we'll see that the default setting for the number of files for one submission is set to unlimited. So they can upload as many files to this Dropbox as they want. We're going to leave it as that, rather than choosing to only allow students one file per submission. And the reason is this. If a student uploads the wrong document or realizes they made a mistake and wants to re-upload a newer version before the due date, they won't be able to do that if we select one file per submission. And this could cause more trouble for you as you'll have to individually delete the file they accidentally uploaded before they can submit a new one. And this is going to take up a lot more of your time. So also, next, we'll ensure that all submissions are kept as well. Now we don't need to add a notification email, of course we can if we want to be notified when we get a new submission, but we're not going to do that today. And we also don't need to create a new category, but just know that you can if you want to organize your drop boxes. this is the way to do it. Now we do need to give this Dropbox a point value. Let's say for our purposes this essay is worth 50 points, and we'll add that here. Now we want to create a grade item that will link this Dropbox directly to our gradebook. When we do this, this assignment will now be reflected in the gradebook and it'll make our grading quicker as the scores we input while reviewing the student assignments in the Dropbox tool will automatically be sent to the gradebook. We're not going to spend a ton of time discussing grade items, the gradebook, or how to grade student submissions in the Dropbox tool but we have created a number of videos that cover those topics and I'll link those at the end of this video. So we'll see that we have no grade item attached so let's create a new one by clicking new grade item. A pop-up will appear and we'll choose numeric. Then we'll give the grade item the same name as our Dropbox is titled just to minimize confusion as this is what will be displayed in the gradebook. So in this case essay number one narrative analysis. Now we'll scroll down and we'll see that the default point value for grade items is 10 points. Each time we'll need to remember to change that so we have the correct value in there and if we'll remember our essay is worth 50 points so we'll add that same value here 
50. We don't want the students to be able to exceed that value. This assignment's not a bonus assignment, nor do we want to exclude it from our final grade calculations, so we'll just click Save. Now we'll see that this Dropbox is linked to the gradebook through this grade item here. We'll scroll down and we'll see that we can add a rubric to this assignment to make communicating our assignment requirements to students easier and to make grading much more efficient. It takes a little bit of time to set up on the front end, but it's worth it long term to make grading a lot quicker. Again, this is a topic for another video. So we finished with the Properties tab. Let's scroll up and click on Restrictions. The Restrictions tab allows you to choose when the Dropbox can be accessed by students and when it's due. Now by default, the Dropbox is hidden from users, so we can deselect that when we want our students to be able to see it. We can also give this Dropbox a due date. So we'll select that checkbox here that says Has Due Date and we'll input a date. Now the students will not be able to submit files past that date. So next are availability dates. So when do we want students to be able to see and start submitting files to the Dropbox? And when do we want the Dropbox folder to disappear from their view? So we'll click here to give the Dropbox a start date. When do we want them to be able to start submitting work? And we'll add a date. Then next, when do we want the Dropbox to disappear from the student's view? This selection isn't mandatory and you may want to leave it with no end date so that the students can see the Dropbox that they've already completed and they will be able to see any potential corrections, feedback, and annotations you gave. As long as the due date's established, students won't be able to go back into the Dropbox and submit responses again past that due date that you've identified. With no end date, they'll only be able to see that there was a Dropbox assignment that they've already submitted or they haven't submitted and they'll be able to see any potential feedback that you've provided within it. If we make that disappear from their view by creating an end date, they will no longer be able to access that information and that feedback that you've provided. Next, we'll hit Save and Close here at the bottom, and that's it. Now we'll see that our Dropbox is created, and we'll see the small icon here which lets us know that the grade item is associated with this Dropbox submission folder, and it's communicating with the gradebook. All right, so those are the basics of creating a Dropbox submission folder in D2L. If you want more information on how to review, assess, grade, and provide feedback for student submissions, click on the link at the end of this video. I hope you found this video useful. Please don't hesitate to reach out to the CDI team for help if you ever get stuck along the way. All the best.